BBC, it's not the one you're thinking of, folks, I'm talking about the British Broadcasting Corporation, is accused of trying to indoctrinate kids after CBBS, I don't know, program says fish can swap genders. What woke nonsense will they come up with next? CBBS, its channel aimed at under sevens, broadcast a segment about how some species can go from being a boy fish to a girl fish. The claim has provoked anger among campaigners who fear it was intended to normalize the controversial ideology at an early age. Vosh, isn't that just factually true? Yes. Well, fish don't have gender, they have sex. But because the right says that gender and sex are the same, then yes, it is true. And it is in any case inaccurate given that fish do not have a gender identity. Oh, woke Daily Mail pointing out the difference between gender and sex. They are also highly suspicious about the timing of the CBB's item after the British Museum highlighted fish that are <clears throat> protogenous hermaphrodites to coincide with the start of Pride Month. It comes after the BBC was criticized over a pre free watershed episode of Casualty last weekend in which a non-binary character discussed having top surgery. So this is apparently what the show looks like. I can't play it because copyright, but, you know. As hermaphrodites, clownfish pictured from the show. You know, that's so fitting because I also think that the trans people being annoying and bottom posting on my timeline are clowns. So it fits that uh, clownfish would be hermaphrodites. Uh, are born with both sets of reproductive organs that can change from male to female if the alpha female of their group dies. Well, isn't that crazy? The Safe School Alliance, which is campaigning against inappropriate sex education lessons, said, quote, CBB's indoctrinating toddlers into the ideological concept of changing from a boy to a girl. BBC send in the clownfish for Pride Month to target children with the clownfish, and yet again fail in their safeguarding responsibility. Twitter user Sion Jones, who spotted the segment, said, quote, the fact that there's clearly been a meeting where this was discussed in terms of trans, but they've also tried to maintain the plausible deniability of it's just a fun fact about fish is extremely disappointing. So, obviously this is funny because they're anti-science and they hate the natural world and they spite God's creations because they hate trans people so much. But I think this is also kind of like a chilling reminder of what fascism does to the brain. Reactionary politics does not just include, let's, let's say, for example, that the reactionaries win and trans people are all forced back in the closet. This is already terrible, right? But keeping trans people repressed, keeping them in the closet, keeping them silent or dead requires active ideological policing. It's not enough. You, you don't just stop once that's done, right? Like, now you have to think, okay, in order for us to keep this status quo that we have forced into existence, we now have to maintain it by preventing children from even encountering the concept. You know, a good example of this is when you look at like far right groups, they tend to be opposed to any media which seems to be in favor of diversity as a concept. It doesn't matter whether the diversity is in fantasy or science fiction worlds. It doesn't matter whether or not it has anything to do with race. It could be like any kinds of differences. In reality, all ideologies, including like Nazism, support some degree of diversity if you widen the goalpost of diversity to include like any differences between people you know men and women people who are slightly different heights right so it's like okay so the concept of diversity isn't a fundamental evil to any group just depends on what kind of diversity you're talking about but they wouldn't even tolerate a story about a bunch of snooty tall people learning to realize that they could get along with a short person does that sound crazy to you am i being understood right now because i'm right You've seen conservatives freak out over stuff like this, haven't you? Get angry at the concept of inclusion, like, like, at all, you know? Even in areas where theoretically nobody should take issue with it? This is the, the threat that reactionary politics pose. It's why they're anti-freedom. It's why they have to force this ideology, because they need to maintain a state of ignorance where you can't even encounter these ideas. And that's what they're doing. Because the thing is, this person, Sion Jones on Twitter, 
they could be correct. They may or may not have been trying to sneak in a little um, pro-trans thing with the fish. But here's the thing. You'll never know. And because you'll never know, that means that in their world, you never get to learn about hermaphroditic fish. You don't get to. Because it's always possible that the reason the person is telling you is because they're secretly trying to give you a positive message about trans people. The only way to maintain the reactionary worldview is through complete hegemonic ideological control. It's the only way. And, uh, I don't know, it seems kind of bad in my personal opinion. As hermaphrodite, wait, is there anything more to this? Caroline Fisk from Conservatives for Women told the Mail last night, the fact that the BBC is inserting this clownish narrative in the children's programming during Pride Month is pernicious. Many of us are sadly very confident that the agenda is to confuse young children about their sex. You will never get to learn about the empirical world. You will never, ever, ever get to learn about anything if they're the ones in charge. You will only get to learn highly ideological partisan history lessons about how the country you happen to be born in is better than countries where people have different skin tones. That is it. That's the, that's the only thing they're interested in teaching you. Wait, so The Giver? Haven't, ha, isn't The Giver one of the most, like, banned books? Don't conservatives not like The Giver because it's literally about empathy? The whole point of The Giver is about empathy and empathy, like, extending beyond the reach of, uh, of uh, you know, authoritarian governance. I thought it was reactionary. Is the giver reactionary? You mean the giving tree? No, the giver. The giver is a reactionary. What are you guys talking about? What are you people saying? You know what? No more. Stop. None of you are allowed to type anymore. Stop. 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 The main reason why The Giver was banned or challenged included the violent content related to euthanasia, suicide, infanticide, and the sexually suggestive content in the novel. Jesus Christ. In Ohio and Florida. Huh. Only in Ohio. Yeah.